they've been on, not only on the ground holding him off, they have retaken some of the territory that he initially took. And no amount of... Thanks, Senator Johnson. Senator Hassan. Well, thank you, Chairman Blumenthal and Ranking Member Johnson. Uh, thank you to our witnesses as well for being here today and for your efforts to document Putin's invasion of Ukraine and help the United States and our allies hold Russia accountable for a brutal, unjustified, unprovoked invasion. As the chair just mentioned, I was on the delegation trip to Ukraine uh, just at the end of last week. We met with President Zelensky, we met with his top military leaders, we met with American experts on the ground in Ukraine, and through all of that, we discussed the critical importance of continued U.S. military and financial support. It is clear that with our help, Ukraine will win this war, and I want to be very clear about that. Without it, they will lose. The Ukrainian people are extraordinarily innovative, they are strong, and they are determined. They have fought off the Russian behemoth for two years. Remember when Putin first invaded? Everybody said they have two weeks. They've been not only on the ground holding them off, they have retaken some of the territory that he initially took. And no amount of Russian misinformation can change that. The Ukrainian people are clear-eyed about the challenges that they face, but they remain determined because they know that freedom is worth fighting for. And they are sacrificing their lives to fight for what we have and for what democracies around the world have. Authoritarians around the world are watching what we do. China, Iran, North Korea. And they are questioning whether democracies will support the Ukrainian people in this fight. And the Ukrainian people, let's be clear, are not asking us to send our sons and daughters to this fight, to this front. They are asking the United States to do what the United States can do, which is manufacture the level of munitions and weapons and get it to the front as they sacrifice their lives in this fight. The Senate recently passed a national security supplemental funding bill with vital aid for Ukraine. Our colleagues in the House must now act to get aid to Ukraine across the finish line. It's the most important thing that we can do to stand up to Putin and help Ukraine win. At the same time, we have to take action to further degrade Russia's military capabilities by improving the effectiveness of our sanctions and our export controls. And there's plenty of room for improvement, which I think is what the point of this hearing is. So I look forward to this discussion. I urge my colleagues to remain focused on getting aid to Ukraine and ensuring the defeat of Putin's invasion. So my first question uh, to Ms. Repakova. Congress clearly needs to do more to ensure that American-made semiconductors and advanced technologies are not being used against Ukraine. I'm really concerned that Russia is circumventing our export controls through partnerships with other adversaries. For example, under current export control laws, adversaries like China can legally purchase component parts of advanced semiconductor manufacturing equipment. Using this equipment, China can then manufacture and sell advanced semiconductors to Russia. Would imposing explicit multilateral export controls on the component parts of advanced manufacturing machinery, such as semiconductor manufacturing equipment, help stop Russia from avoiding U.S. export controls through partnerships with China? Thank you so much uh, for your question. We have indeed seen a pickup in machinery imports by Russia because they are preparing for possible measure like that because that allows them to ins insulate, isolate themselves for somewhat longer. We have traditionally seen imports of components but not, and maybe some repair parts, but not of the machinery of outside the normal business cycle. We have seen a significant pickup. So yes, working multilaterally, yeah with our partners to block that, it is critical. It is sort of staying ahead of the game. It's staying ahead of Russia's circumvention techniques. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Byrne, as you mentioned in your testimony, in order to sustain his war against Ukraine, Putin has found ways to evade Western sanctions and export controls. 
Recent reporting from the New York Times has highlighted the methods that Russia uses to avoid oil sanctions by hiding and spoofing the locations of vessels carrying its oil. While this reporting was focused on Russian oil, these deceptive practices can help adversaries evade various kinds of sanctions and export controls, including acquiring technology that supports Russia's military efforts. How would American enforcement efforts benefit from a dedicated system to track, identify, and interdict suspect vessels that disable or spoof their location? Thank you for the question. The, the, we, we, for several years, have worked uh, very closely on illicit shipping, North Korea's illicit shipping, uh, currently Russia's illicit shipping. The, there is a huge amount to do on this portfolio, but it's a critical avenue to be able to harm our adversaries and disrupt their activities, is to focus on the vessels that are moving weapons, that are moving equipment, that are moving oil, that are evading sanctions. To do that, we need to have visibility on what they're doing. We need to be able to defeat the deceptive practices that they engage. And we need to do it ultimately with commercial and open source data. We need to generate those, that, those intelligence products so that they can be shared with our partners across the world, so that they can be shared with countries that can take action. So I think very much so. And as we've seen recently, how did the munitions move between North Korea and Russia? Very like thousands of containers of North Korean munitions. They moved on Russian vessels uh, that were not transmitting on AIS, that were engaged in deceptive practices that had built front company structures to hide the real owners. So I think very much so, and I think it would, it would, it would be welcome. Well, thank you. We have a bill, and I hope the Senate will take it up and pass it. It's called the Vessel Tracking for Sanctions Evasion Act. It's a bipartisan bill that I introduced with Senator Langford, and it would create a dedicated pilot program within the Department of Homeland Security to achieve these goals. So I urge my colleagues to look at it. Um, Mr. Chair, if I could ask one more question, sure. and I will conclude, uh, to Mr. Spleters. As we just heard from Mr. Byrne, and as you discussed in your testimony, the Russian government increasingly obtains restricted goods through third countries referred to as transshipment, including many of its computer chips. I agree with you that private companies need to improve their due diligence processes to better control the final destination of their products. At the same time, I understand that companies may struggle to see through potentially sophisticated deception efforts. What are organizations such as yours doing to share information with technology makers so that they can take appropriate steps to secure supply chains and ensure that critical technology doesn't end up in the hands of adversarial nations. Thank you very much for the question. I'll try to be brief. Um, the first thing that needs to be done is to know what components are being used. If you don't open the weapon system, you, you cannot do anything. So you need to know what Russia needs in the future. The second step is to alert those, those manufacturers that their product is being diverted. And the third one is to work with them to try to figure out what, what visibility they have on their own supply chain. It, it, it can be limited, but if we pull together different responses from different manufacturers, we can obtain a level of, of information that manufacturers on their own cannot, cannot attain. So working together with manufacturers, we, we have cases where U.S. Uh, companies then come back to us and say, this model you have identified of our product in a weapon, now we have a new company asking for it. It's not sanctioned, it's not listed, but can you tell us more about it? And we, we have, through that method of preempt, preemption, we have identified companies based in China that have been diverting components of millions of dollars of components to sanctioned companies in Russia. And the result is that last Friday, that specific company has now been sanctioned and, 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 and listed. So this, this work between civil society working in, you know, in the field right and the manufacturers and the government can have a very, very strong effect. Thank you very much, and thanks for your indulgence, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Senator. But they remain determined because they know that freedom is worth fighting for. States and our allies hold Russia accountable for a brutal... Un thanks, Senator Johnson. Senator Hassan. Well, thank you, Chairman Blumenthal, of last week. We met with President Zelensky, we met with his top military leaders, we met with American experts on the ground in Ukraine. The Ukrainian people are extraordinarily innovative. They are sorry and financial support. It is clear that with our help, Ukraine will win this war. The Ukrainian people are clear-eyed about the challenges that they face. 
unjustified, unprovoked invasion. As the chair just mentioned, 